Hello, this is Hakuna Bean, and today we are going on r slash traumatism deck. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. I had to make a run for the bathroom during an attack of ulcerative colitis while the plane was landing. Got yelled at by the flight attendant. During the years when I had chronic ulcerative colitis and had to fly, I always made a point of getting an aisle seat as close to the bathroom as I possibly could. On this particular flight, I was 45 rows away, and as the plane started its ascent, I suddenly felt the dread symptoms indicating I was about to have uncontrollable diarrhea. I unbuckled my seatbelt and jumped up, and as I was making my way back to the bathroom, a flight attendant started hollering at me to get back to, into my seat right now or I'd be fined. I said, I have colitis and I have to go now, and I assume you would rather I have like explosive bloody diarrhea in the toilet than all over me in the aisle. I got just a glimpse of the disgusted, shocked look on her face before I slammed the bathroom door. I got there barely in time and didn't get hassled when I came out. And here's part two. I remember this incident after posting the first one. I was in a store when I felt an attack coming on and told the employee, yeah, I need to use the restroom. She told me there, hers was in public and there was one at the McDonald's across the street. Both businesses were on a major road and neither was on the corner and there was no way I was going to be able to make it, it down to the corner in time, let alone across the street. Then and back ways to McDonald's. I explained to her that I had a medical condition and was having an ulcerative colitis attack and had maybe a minute to get to the bathroom, if I was lucky. She insisted that the public was not allowed to use the restroom under any circumstances. So I looked her, her straight in the eye and said she had a choice. She could either let me use her, use her restroom or I'll pull down my shorts and have explosive bloody diarrhea right here in the middle of the store, all over their nice carpet. Which did she prepare? Is she for her? Oops. Try to use my disability against me? I'll make you regret it. This happened my last year of high school. Around that time, it was very common in my school to call things, things autistic as a kind of insult, which, as a person with autism, really annoyed me. I use it as a subscriber of myself because I am autistic. One of my final exams was in math, so we had a special day to only prepare us for that. I was sitting in front of a guy from my a class who was relatively nice most of the time, but more of a class clown. We talked about the task we were given and just about things in general. I remember what I said, but well, he started laughing and said, well, you're pretty autistic. I looked him in many eyes and just plainly said, yes. He was silent for a moment and just looked at me. What do you mean, yes? He asked me, confused. My re response was, I am autistic. I was diagnosed with it three years ago. Oh, I was diagnosed with four. His face dropped up and he started apologizing like crazy. From that day on, I never heard him use autism as an insult in again. As he shouldn't. Really, nobody should. Weird way to insult someone, huh? You lost weight! You look great! You're all probably sick of seeing this, but thanks, Click, for introducing the separate to me. Oh, yeah, it seems like a lot of people got introduced to the separate from um, Click. Actually, that's what made me feel like, like, like making this video today. Slight backstory. About seven years ago, I was forcibly moved out by my father. And after my mother tried to guilt trip me into dropping the associated court case, we went no contact for a while. She and I are on good terms now. You should not have dropped that uh, case. Screw that. But it took a while for us to get comfortable meeting up again. And this interaction occurred during our first meetup after that point. 
Because how much is this affects my life, I've been between jobs for a while and was severely struggling with the poverty of very abruptly having to fend for myself on top of the mental issues caused by the incident. Suffice to say, I was as really struggling to have regular meals, and was definitely not at 100%. It had been close to a year since she'd last seen me, and due to this intense poverty, I had naturally lost close to 30 kilograms or 66 pounds since then. I was slightly overweight now, and was now just slightly underweight. Don't worry, I wasn't skin and bones. Mom was trying to be friendly. I'm sure she did sincerely mean it as a compliment when she said, You've lost weight. You look great. But, uh, uh, but she, uh, she's also struggled with her weight a bit. However, I was still quite bitter and uncomfortable with seeing her again after the stance she took. And it wasn't exactly intentional weight loss. I looked her in the eye and said, Thank you. It's from the malnutrition since I can't afford to eat properly. Y'all, she went fucking silent. I mean, that is so real, too. That is so real. That is the best way to respond to that. I don't think she looked me in the eye for the rest of the meetup. I would never be so blatant and rude to her or now, since we're on good terms, but she really needed the reminder of how bad my life had become because of the incident. At least she bought me a fuck ton of groceries afterwards because of it, so I had some proper food again for a while. Avalis? Gotta make you stop fighting. So where I live, if people tend to use blind as an insult. I've been blind since birth, so I have been getting good at just brushing it off. But sometimes, I feel a bit chaotic. Ooh, they're edgy. Some people apologize, like my band teacher, who apologized like five times when she accidentally said it. Sometimes I like overhear people oh, insulting people. This time, I, non-binary, was sitting on a school bus with my friends. We were just pulling up to the school and everyone was getting their backpacks and setting up. I was taking out my earbuds so I can walk around safely. First thing I hear is a couple of boys yelling at each other. As for each one of the shouts, Are you blind? In my annoyed states, because my eyes are hurting because of the photophobia, said so to light, not for your photos. I was in a bit of a chaotic mood. I go back, yes! Both of them stopped yelling at each other, and they, they shook hands and said, bros? Bros. Also, if he, read, if he reads this, hey, click. <laughs> hmm. Some of these are written well, some of these are written badly, and I am really bad at reading. Push my sister? I'll push you harder. This story is a little over 20 years old. I, if I saw this sub right on the Click's channel, I thought it would go perfectly here. Dad loves telling the story, considering I, remember, I only remember some of the aftermath due to being so young at the time. My dad's family has a big family reunion every year around Memorial Day. I won't go into details as it's a large gathering, and I'm unsure if any of them use Reddit, but this takes place in the woods of Kentucky. I was around six at the time, and my sibling was about three when this story took place. Mom forced us both into dresses, which I hated, but my sibling loved. At one point, I had, wand I had wandered up to the abandoned barn with a little creek in front of it. A creek, we had been told, was filled with snakes who prevented us from swimming in it. Not that much of a deterrent for children being raised in Florida, but it's important info. Anyway, this group of older boys, all cousins of ours, came up to me all around 8 to 10. There were no words spoken, but the biggest one had pushed me into the creek. I remember crying, I remember being happy that dress got there, and I would have to change into my comfy t-shirt and jeans. Mom was yelling something I don't remember, but there was a splash behind me as I got back on my feet on dry I land. My baby sister had pushed a boy twice her height into the creek he had just pushed me into. I remember he was yelling about snakes while they were giggling. The other boys had scared because an adult, our mom, 
was refreshing to see him to cry. I don't remember much else beyond getting dressed and eating and, and proceeding as normal. Besides that group avoiding us from then on. Thank you all for your time and attention. This is a story you me and my sibling left out to say, and I hope it brought a smile to your day too. <sighs> I witnessed my friend completely shut down a girl who was harassing her. When I, 19 female, and my friend, 19 gen and a fluid, I believe, were in 8th grade, we were sitting in math. This was long before either of us knew that we weren't cis, by the way, so we were both supposedly boys. Not too important, just thought I'd mention that. I don't remember what exactly we were doing in math class, but the teacher wasn't in front of the board lecturing us, so it was probably just work or something. I overheard my friend arguing with another classmate. We'll call her Jack Horner because it's funny. That's a funny name. She was going on about how my friend was using their Chromebook for non-academic purposes. That's not even a euphemism for anything. It was literally just like them going on Google Images and searching up Pokemon or something. It went on for like a couple of minutes, and it was getting kind of annoying. Then all concluded in the most glorious, spectacular way. She was like, I saw you! I saw you watching in your Chromebook screen! To which my friend re replied, well, thank you for admitting that. The whole class just witnessed Jack Horner get shut down like that, and her, her reaction was also very funny. She melodramatically walked out of the classroom, and came back like a minute later and proceeded to play victim, being like, It's not funny! And here's her on the cream. The math teacher, who, by the way, hated my friend because they were constantly annoying during class time back in 8th grade, was completely on my friend's side. The teacher told her, no, it is funny. You brought this upon yourself. While some of the details might be a little fuzzy because this happened like six years ago, that's what I remember and it was awesome. That sounds awesome. Oh yeah, this, sorry, this one's good. If it will load. Okay. Teacher learned how periods work the hard way. So this scenario took place years ago in 12th grade in Germany, just for context. Lunch break just ended and I just took a seat in the classroom. 10 minutes go by and all of a sudden, I feel my period starts now. Side note, my PMS, the quality and location of the pain, the way it wanted around my body, somehow followed an exactly time schedule and therefore, I always knew how much time was left before my period starts. My internal clock never, ever failed me until this warm, sunny day. I was absolutely sure the next two days will be clear, so I went for a knee-length summer dress. Back to the classroom. I knew I had to go to the bathroom. Actually, sprint to the bathroom in a race against gravity. I put my hand up. I'm really sorry, Mr. Teacher, but I need to go to the bathroom now. I guess there was some panic in my voice already. The whole class understand the situation except the teacher. We just had lunch. Why don't you go during the break? Why can't you hold in until next class? Mind you that we were all legal adults in the room for some reason. He wanted to push this shitty power play while still not getting the damn point. I looked him dead in the eyes. Maybe he just needs a second to get it. He didn't. What is it? I'm waiting. For what? For you to get it. Meanwhile, one could feel the, a, a building tension in the whole room physically. Teacher obviously annoyed. Get what? You aren't five, just hold it. I took a really deep voice. That's why my comments voice. Mr. Teacher, you are absolutely right. I'm not a five-year-old. And so the reason for my urgent need to go to the bathroom is not the same as a five-year-old. We have two options. You let me go now. Or I'll be sitting right here in the front row on this chair 
for the next 80 minutes while you witness how a little a puddle of blood will form right under me and this little puddle will get bigger and bigger until my blood will be dripping off the chair and running down my legs. The choice is yours. The whole class burst into uncontrollable laughter. The teacher turned white as a ghost. He looked so shocked and embarrassed he couldn't say anything. He just pointed at the door, stuttering, Go! So I delivered my little sprint and saved my dress at la last second. Teacher couldn't look at me for a while. Class was entertained. I just hope he learned something. And final one. You want to call me a slur? Then say it to my face. I was watching a click video about this supper and remembered this story from my mom that fits here perfectly. My mom was Korean and years ago she was driving into a Trader Joe's parking lot, as one does, and she somehow did something to piss off this one driver. His driver then decided and it was perfectly rational rash rash to drive beside my mom's window, pull out her uh, eyes so they were slits, and yell a racist slur for Chinese people. before parking and going into the store. My mother was rightfully extremely pissed. So when she found parking spots, she t stormed into the Trader Joe's and found that lady. If you're gonna call me Rachel Slur for people from um, Eastern Asia, call me that Rachel Slur for or people from Eastern Asia to my face. I'm not gonna repeat the slur. Are you kidding me? I'm not that stupid. The woman tried to just walk away, but my mom continued to follow her, her for aisles. At one point, the woman and threatened to call security, to which my badass mom said, Go ahead, call them! Needless to say, she didn't call security. After a while, the woman I left my mom, um, left, or my mom stopped following her. The details are fuzzy, and this story became a cautionary tale to anyone who might think to mess with my mom. Literally... Badass. Anyway, that was r slash traumatize and back. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!